Tom here from Lauren Systems, and let's talk about Unify specifically, how we manage it as a business and how you can manage it. Now, you don't have to be a business to do this, but the question comes up a lot because we do so many Unify deployments for our customers that we manage is how do you manage all of them in the Unify controller, or do you set up a Unify controller for each customer? It's actually easier because we're the one managing it and we're not sharing access with anyone else. So we set it up in our controller. And that's because the Unify controller supports multi-tenancy. Now you can do this as well if even if you're a home user and maybe you want to have multiple sites that you have set up. There are a few prerequisites here. One, that you have a publicly available IP address and two, that you have DNS working. Now, could you do this without DNS just by IP address? Yes. But if that IP address ever changes, you'll find that you lose access to all the devices that are remotely connecting to it. That's one of the reasons that I see having a DNS entry is probably a prerequisite to get this working and get it working well. Now, we do a lot of Unify consulting, and unfortunately, some of the consulting we do is people who did not set this up with DNS. That's one of the reasons I bring it up at the beginning to be set up that way. Also, if you'd like to hire us for Unify consulting, head over to LawrenceSystems.com, click that Hires button at the top, and let us know how we can be helpful with your unified deployment. Now let's get into setting up this controller, walk you through the steps of setting up multi-site management and some of the process and procedures we use to do these large scale deployments and how we mass adopt them and move them sometimes to a different controller or keep them in our controller. There's a couple strategies I wanna talk about for managing these, but it's overall pretty simple once you know which buttons to click and that's what we're gonna cover now. Now, the first step is verifying DNS. Now, this may be a different step depending on where you host it. We're going to do a dig for unifydemo.detroitidlingcompany.com. Detroit Idling Company is a mythical company we set up for doing demonstrations. And we see it's pointed to this public IP address of 172.232.30.75. Now, however you want to verify your DNS records, just make sure you have an A record pointing at whatever you're going to be using as the inform URL. This does not have to be the same as the management port that we're going to get to later. This only has to be the inform URL DNS. Now, it can be the same or you can have something different. And if you're hosting this internally, it's definitely going to be pointed differently. This is a question that comes up. We actually have our own hosting environment internally at our building. So when we host it, we have an internal name versus an external name. The internal name pointing, of course, at our local IP address versus a remote one. But for this, unifiedemo.detroitidlingcompany.com resolves to this IP address and it's working. So let's go ahead and SSH into it to talk next about the firewall rules that you're going to need. Now, we're assuming this is all going to be on Linux. Could this work on Windows? It's not going to work well. That's just one of those things that even though they support loading this on Windows, I don't recommend it. We've always found it to be very, very buggy and the source of many problems. So we're going to go ahead and SSH into root at unified demo to DetroitItalyCompany.com. And before we set up our Unify controller, we want to get the firewall rules set up. The reason for this is when you set up the Unify controller itself, you end up with a problem of it's going to ask you to set up your username and password. So if you set it up and someone else gets to port 8443, where the management port lives before you do, they could set it up with their username and password, and you probably will have to start the process over. So from a Blank in controlled installer, the things you want to do is get your firewall looking like this. I allow 22 TCP. Now, I have it listed as anywhere so I can keep logging into this. Normally, I would say set this to whatever your IP is so you can restrict it to only you getting access to this. Then you want to say 8080 anywhere, 3478 anywhere. 8443, the management port, restrict that to yourself. And they're going to repeat again here for the IPv6 version. And for those wondering about the ports, there is an entire list I'll leave a link to. There are other ports you can open for possible other reasons, but the only ones you need just to control the Unify access points and the Unify switches are the ports I mentioned. There are other things such as Captive Portal, but I don't really recommend running Captive Portal across the open internet, but they do have more ports you could open for other reasons. Now for setting up and installing the controller itself, I'll leave a link down below to another video where I walk you through step-by-step -step how to get the controller set up. Also, I'll leave a link to the script that is in the Unify site. And that is so you can use UI Glenn, I believe, is who supports that. He's a 
person working at Unify has an auto deploy script that works really well. The third option, which people love to bring up is what about Docker? I don't recommend Docker because it's not officially from Unify. So I don't really know who builds it or really spend any time looking at the different Dockerized versions because they're not officially from Unify. I don't have any problem running the controller directly on the system. So now that that's covered, let's get into actually configuring the controller once you've gone through one of those setup methods that I mentioned. One more step that's worth mentioning is what about setting up a certificate? A lot of people ask about this for the Unify controller. It's not needed, but of course, people may get annoyed by that 8443 port not having a properly signed certificate. And one of the simplest ways to do this, and we have a reverse proxy at our office that we used to solve the problem, but if you don't already have a reverse proxy set up, I do have videos on HA proxy and setting that up, or you can simply use a Cloudflare tunnel. And the Cloudflare tunnel method is what I use for this video, and I want to show you the configuration. I have a whole nother video link down below for Cloudflare tunnels, you simply load the tunnel on the same instance that's running your Unify controller. We point it at localhost 8443 and under additional application settings under TLS, we do want to make sure no TLS verify. What it's doing is not verifying that certificate. And that means yodelfy.lts demo work will perfectly work fine with no certificate error. So that's how we come up with that there. By the way, this does not have to match your inform URL that we had. So it's okay that they're different. The management interface can be on a completely separate one and it does not need to be exposed at all. And that firewall port can actually be completely closed off once you have something like a Cloudflare tunnel, reverse proxy, tail scale, or any other number of ways of getting in. I just prefer not to expose the management port. I don't think it's a great idea. All right, we have our Unify controller set up. We're at yodel-fi.ltsdemo.work and we're at the default dashboard. I did switch this to dark mode already. I didn't want to start off in light mode. So technically I've logged in before, but we're going to go here and click on the gear. We're going to go to system and we want to make sure multi-site management is enabled. It may or may not, depending on what version you loaded, have this enabled, but we just check that box. And this is what allows for more than one site to be on here. Then we're going to go down here to show more under advanced. And I've clicked override already. And we want this right here, unifiedemo.detroityodlingcompany.com. We know this is what our DNS resolves to, to get to this IP address. So we want to make sure the inform host has set to this because this is the URL we're going to set and form any device that we want to adopt. Now, if we go over here for device adoption under Unified Devices, you'll see there's none in here. And let's go ahead and add a device. Now, I have a brand new Unified device that is on my local network here. So it's not going to work with network discovery because this is in the cloud where their Unify demo is. And we're just going to SSH UBNT at and the local IP address of the device we plugged in. And the password is going to be UBNT. And this logs us into this U6 mesh device. Now we're going to use set and form HTTP unified demo dot Detroit yodeling company dot com colon 8080 slash inform. It is very important that you do not accidentally type an S. It is not HTTPS. It is not supposed to be HTTPS. This is just the inform URL. And when we set the inform URL and we set it to Detroit yodeling company and there's that port 8080. Yes, I know you could change it to a different port. I don't recommend it. That is going to be the default port right there. Make sure you have the colon 8080 slash inform. And now it will go to the Unify to complete the adopt process. And we're back over here and we simply click to adopt. It sees the IP address. There's the MAC address. So we can verify this device and we want to click adopt device. All right, now we have the U6 mesh adopted. Now, if you want to add more sites, let's go ahead and do that. And we have the default site, so let's add a new site. And we'll call this site the Toledo Yodeling Company. Submit. And now we're on this company. But how do we get devices moved between the companies? Pretty simple. We're going to go over here to Unify Devices. And we see none here because we're in the Toledo one. We'll switch back to the default site that we had. And we'll go back over here to this access point. And now we can actually migrate this particular access point move to new site, only other site in the list here, Toledo Yodeling Company, and we hit move. U6 mesh has been moved to the Detroit Yodeling Company. So we go over here. And it's now being provisioned on this site right here. All right, now that it's updated online, let's go ahead and go to settings and let's forget this device because I want to move it back in here, but show you what happens when you try to adopt to a multi-site. So if we're going to forget the U6 mesh, hit confirm. Now we're going to SSH back into it now that it's reset to factory defaults. UBNT is going to be the password again. 
And it's the same set and form URL. So we're gonna go ahead and set and form it again and switch back over to the controller. And we see the device under the Toledo Yodeling Company ready to be adopted. But if we go over here and switch to the default company and go to the devices, it's ready to be adopted. And let's say we add one more site and we'll just call this another demo company. Hit submit and then go over here. We can also see it ready to be adopted. The device lands in the current company you're switched to, but it shows up for adoption in all companies when you send the inform URL because it doesn't distinguish exactly which company is there. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is probably something that people are wondering is, Tom, we've seen you set up 100, 200, 300 at a time of these access points, and I'm gonna guess you're not SSHing into these individually, or are you? And definitely, I do not want to SSH in these individually. Now, if you have your devices on the same network as a controller, local discovery is an option, but if your controller's somewhere Somewhere else or in the cloud, there's actually another trick you can use. It's really simple. And this is just clever the way Unify does this. You can build a temporary controller. And on that temporary controller, you can put, well, as many access devices and switches you want all around it on that same network. Use local discovery to adopt all those devices. Then we're going to do a site transfer. I'm going to walk you through how to do a site transfer because it's really easy to do. And it's something we've actually done for a lot of customers, especially when they have their own controller, but they would like us to do some pre-configuration. The pre-configuration still works because when you mass adopt, when you configure, you export all the settings you put into setting it up and you can then migrate it from your local, even if it's temporary controller, to wherever its permanent home may be. Now for us, if it's a managed client, this is nice because we're doing it all on our controller in our office and then sending it to the client. But in the case of our consulting work, well, sometimes people go, I want it in my controller because I don't want you to have the keys to it. And that's perfectly fine. That's what these site migrations are for. It's pretty simple. Let me walk you through the process. All right, we see we have my U6 mesh online and adopted to unify.lawrencesystems.com. That's our controller. We want it in the Yodelfy controller for our demo here, because that's where we like to transfer this device. Now we can pretend there's a whole lot of devices in here, but for sake of the demo, I only adopted one. We're gonna go down here to the gear icon. Then we go to system and we see Tom's demo site. And let's start exporting that site. Okay, export. We want to first download the site file export. So let's click on that. So we have the file. Then we're going to continue. Migrate the site. Yes, we'd like to migrate the site. Where's this site going to go? Host name or IP address. And that's going to be unifieddemo.detroityodelingcompany.com. It is not, in the case, as I mentioned earlier, the same as our management URL. So it is our inform URL that it's looking for. And we check this and it would select all the devices that are going to be down here. So we're going to go ahead and hit migrate devices. And don't do this just yet. Do this later. You can then forget them out of the controller. I'm going to skip this for the moment because if you forget them out of the controller before they have adopted over to the new system, that could be bad. So we actually just leave it on this screen right here. And we're going to go over here and we want to import site, upload the file. There's our network site demo site. So we're going to hit select site name demo migration and we hit import then we're going to go over here and it's importing all right and now the device is adopted now that i know this is happy and working and online and if all the devices are happy and online i would say go ahead and forget the devices on the other side so we'll go ahead and forget these and one device was removed because now there's nothing in this one we've exported it and all the settings came with it because if we go here to wi-fi this is the Terst network where I misspelled test and threw a crazy password in there of Terst test, Terst test or whatever I misspelled and any other settings and any other networks I would have find would have come over with this. Now, all this is done with the latest version of the Unify controller software. And this is a process that's been refined over the years, better and better. They've really got a lot of quality work that's gone into the controller to bring it to where it is today. We used it when it was a lot more basic years ago, but thousands of deployments later, I really love how smooth all this works. But if you need help with any of your Unify, reach out to us, learnsystems.com slash hire us. We do network consulting, lots of Unify consulting, but the controller part, not that hard to get set up. It's stuff that we do for a lot of other people, but these steps are, as I pointed out here, pretty straightforward and simple. And this is one of the things that really sets Unify apart is having such a nice controller system that 
you just don't have these cloud lock-ins like you have with many of the other companies because this did not require you to register with Unified to get any of this to work. You didn't have to lock into their site or anything like that to make this happen. I love hearing from you, so leave your thoughts and comments down below. Let me know if there's some clarification I can do on this to make it a little bit simpler, but I think that should cover it pretty well for setting up multi-site controller. Check out lots of my other videos on different aspects of Unify and controlling them, including how to set up the controller itself. I have that video linked down below. If you want to see more content for this channel, like and subscribe. If you want to talk about this or other topics at more depth and engage with me, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com or hit me up on any of the socials. Wherever they are, you'll find them for where I'm connected at lawrencesystems.com. And thank you.